All right, all right. What's going on, everybody? All my brothers and sisters around the world. I pray all is well with everybody as we give the Lord all the honor, the glory, and all the praise. Now my title says, you are not welcome here, Jesus. So keep moving. You are not welcome here, Jesus. So keep moving. You know, my brothers and sisters, I want to talk about when Jesus was in his hometown. I'm going back to Mark chapter 6, verses 1 through 6. And a lot of times in this walk for Christ, you will be rejected by family, by church folks, by friends, by so many people. And there was a point in ministry where Jesus wasn't accepted. And I want to ask a question. Is the Lord really accepted? in your home. Now, I'm going back to Mark chapter 6 talking about the hometown, but I also want to say in your home, in your church, is the Bible really being taught or is it being rejected? Is Jesus being accepted or rejected in your home, in your church, in your family? Because when you stand on what's real, a lot of people can't handle it. And Jesus had to teach some things that offended a lot of people. And if you are a pastor, if you're standing on what's real, a lot of times you're going to offend people. Or you're trying to offend them and really hurt them. It's like you don't care about them and want them to miss heaven. No. You, you, you stand on what's real out of love. And when I thought about Jesus being rejected by his own, I thought about Stephen being stoned for telling the truth. I thought about Paul being beat up for the truth. I thought about John the Baptist being beheaded for what? So many of them in the Bible stood on what's real and people didn't like that. So as we look in Mark chapter 6 right here, verses 1 through 6, and it says in verse 1, And he went out from thence and came into his own country, and his disciples followed him. So we see now where Jesus is going into his own country. We all know the name of that place, don't we? He got his disciples following him. All right, y'all, now we're going this way. And in verse 2 says, And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many hearing him were astonished. Many heard him. And it was saying, From whence hath this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him? And even such mighty works are wrought by his hands. Verse 3 says, Is not this the carpenter? the son of Mary, the brother of James and, and Joseph and, and of Judah and Simon and are not his sisters here with us and they were offended at him hmm, offended is not this the carpenter oh we, we know who this is This oh man this the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and, and, and of Judah and Simon, we, we, this, we know who this is, alright yeah, all right. We 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 know about him. Hmm. Ain't that how people do you? Oh man, that ain't nothing but Pastor Jackson. He, he all right, man. You know that ain't nothing but Sister Sister Jackson over there. She 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 all right, man. You know we 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 hear about what she do all the time. She preaching and then you know laying hands on folks. She all right, man. That's how people still do you to this day. In their eyes, you really just a nobody. But you really are a child of the king and you are spreading the word. Verse 4 says, But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country, Lord Jesus, and among his own kin and in his own house. Isn't it somehow people would do you in your own area, your own neighborhood? Hmm, the disrespect that you get. The disrespect you get from your kin folks. Verse 5 says, And he could there do no mighty work. Y'all catch verse 5. And he could there do no mighty work. 
save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. Only a few was healed in his own home, y'all. He couldn't do a whole lot of mighty work there. People didn't really want to accept him. And, and, and when you are in a place, uh-oh, come on, y'all, a town where you are not accepted, even in a church building, even in family, you got to shake the dust off your feet and keep moving. You know, I love how when Jesus was rejected, he just kept moving to the ones that wanted to hear he went on to the ones that would accept him. And when you are rejected by your own, that hurts you, don't it? Oh, they ain't going to receive me over here. Let me keep it moving. This is how I have to do with my own family a lot. Oh, man, they mind is made up. They ain't going to listen to that little Ro. Ro don't know what he's talking about. Uh, he, yeah, yada, 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 this, yada, yada, that. Man, we've been in church 20, 30 years, man. Hey, he all right. We know what he's doing. I'm not accepted in a lot of my family. Why? Because I go against what they love. And that is fine with me because I'm not going to let my family help me miss heaven. I'm cool with that. And verse 6 says, And he marveled because of their unbelief. And he went round about the villages teaching. He kept it moving. He marveled because of they unbelief. Hmm. Boy, this is so powerful, y'all. This reminds me of when I hear real preachers preaching. They are always rejected. But if you if you come up in the church with a with a fake doctrine and a feel good sermon, you are fully accepted and welcome. But when you get somebody coming in the church preaching the true gospel and talking about repenting and salvation, they don't want to hear that. Kind of reminds me of it. As long as Jesus was performing them miracles and and oh man, the the the, the feeding the five thousand, the multitude, it was way more than that. Oh, they was all with Jesus, but when that hard stuff started kicking in, well, we don't want to be following him. Hmm. Jesus stood on what was real. They rejected him. And a lot of people are still rejecting the Lord right now. And the ones who are preaching the gospel. They are being totally rejected. When you offend people with the gospel. I'm talking about in a good way. They don't want nothing to do with you. Trust me. I know. I, I, I live. I, I'm living it. I know how people don't want to hear it. You know too. You know how so many people go to church and oh we went to the building, we had a good time, we, we preached, we hooped and hollered and, and we laid hands, we spoke in tongues, we did everything. The choir got down and oh man, oh, oh we took up offering, but did nobody get delivered. Hmm. So many ones on the inside that need to get delivered. See, somebody going to hate, hate me because of this message right here, because I'm standing on once again what's real. We got many people going to church. We got many buildings up. But how many people are truly getting delivered? Truly, what we're talking about is we say being saved. When none of us have reached heaven yet. Jesus, in his years of ministry, resided in that place. He was going to and fro, y'all, preaching and teaching. He lived a, a, a blameless, perfect life. No sin at all. He showed the way, but yet and still, they wasn't ready to believe the gospel. They knew of him, but they truly didn't know him. They all, oh, come on, y'all. We got a lot of people walking around. Yeah, man, I heard of Jesus. I, I heard of the Bible. But do you truly have that one-on-one -on -one relationship with the Lord? We know how to go to church. We know how to sing and, 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 and put on a show and all this other stuff. But I'm talking about what's real, y'all. I'm not saying everybody is fake with what they're doing. No, I'm saying we got a lot of people that are faking and we got a lot of people that are real. They real with what they do. But we got to teach the good and the bad. It's, it's people doing good and then you got a bunch of crooks and, and messed up folks out here trying to use the Bible for something that don't have nothing to do with heaven. Some trying to get rich. They don't truly know 
the Father. You can tell when somebody truly know the Father. You know why? Their life will be straightened up. They wouldn't be the so they wouldn't be the same old person they was claiming to be new in Christ. So we got a lot of people that knew of him, but do they truly know him? It's the same way nowadays, y'all. There is nothing different from now that went on back then. So when you are rejected in your own home, preachers, I hope y'all listening to me. Keep standing on what's real. Pastor Cochran. I don't know if you ever will see this video, but let me tell you something. From looking at you all the time, when, when your faithful servant, Brother Rodney, send me those, those DVDs, when I check out those sermons, always on point. Those type of sermons that you preaching, man, will get you killed. Those type of sermons will make people leave your church. Those type of sermons will have folk mad at each other. And those are the type of sermons that most pastors stay away from. Because they don't want to lose their congregation. They don't want their salary to drop. So I, 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 I'm with you, brother. And so many of y'all that I watch, y'all all know who you are. Y'all stay on this battlefield. Don't, don't, don't start letting people wear... Uh, you know how people can make you start changing your mind because you well you preaching too strong, brother. You, you come on, man. You you need to no. Jesus didn't calm down. Paul didn't calm down. Didn't they didn't calm down? So you keep on going the way you're going, brother, because we need that fire. Because believe it or not, it'll help somebody stay out of the lake of fire. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. Y'all have a wonderful, blessed day. Much love to everybody. Peace.